Hi, welcome to the Biopharma Finder 2.0 health video. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the new features in the peptide mapping workflow. So on the screen, you'll see uh, the process and review page for a peptide mapping experiment. And this experiment, I had two raw files, and it was from the NIST uh, standard antibody uh, sample. And I have a reference, and I have a treated sample. And the treated sample had a synthetic uh, sequence variant spiked into it. So I processed uh, the files using the peptide mapping. And if you look at the real-time optimization, you'll see my parameters. So I have the light chain and the heavy chain. I added a static modification to the cysteine, as you can see here. Did an end glycan search with CHO. And I added the uh, default variable modifications. And this is a triptic digest. For component detection, um, I used basic parameters. I did raise um, the noise level and the threshold for the signal to noise a little bit to get us to about 2 e to the 5. And for the identification, under um, the basic settings, you'll see I'm using the default settings here. I didn't change anything. Under the advanced, I am doing a single base change for the amino acid substitution. I turned off the unspecified modification search. Uh, no disulfide bonds, and the protease is trypsin. Okay, so that's how I did the experiment. And um, if I filter the identification, so what I usually do when I first come in, I'll filter for no blanks, and I can click. Um, and uh, if I right click on the chromatogram, because this is two files, so we have a reference and a um, sample. So I'm going to show the XICs or the SICs for both files. So I need to turn off the basic. Um, the uh, Mayfi chromatogram, and then I'm going to check both files. Now, when I click OK, it's going to start reading um, both files, and it can take a few seconds here because depending on the size of your files and uh, where your files are located, if, it, if it's across the server, um, it might be a little bit slow on bringing in those files, those, both of those files. Uh, but once it's done it, you'll, you'll be able to see uh, both files, uh, one on top of another. So this is our reference, and this is our um, sample. Okay, so now we can see both files. Now, because this was a sequence variant search, you can actually filter by this column. So you can sort by clicking here, or you could say um, show no blanks, um, so non blanks. So this was the actual spike uh, that was spiked into the sample, and you'll clearly see that it is in the sample, not in the reference, and you have the different charge states. Okay, so um, what I want to demonstrate for you is that one of the new features uh, that we have in uh, Biopharma Finder 2.0 is the ability to uh, control the coverage map. So if we go to the mapping tab, you'll see um, the normal peptide sequence coverage map, and we have quite good coverage uh, just with the default settings. And you can kind of scroll down, and you can see all the, the pretty colors to show the peptides. However, let's say, um, if we go back, that you're interested in knowing what would the coverage map look like if I looked at all of the um, non-modified peptides. So if I exclude all the modifications, for example. So we could say that this has to be equal to none. So if we do that and we scroll down, okay, so these are all none for modification. Now we are including our sequence variants, so let's get rid of those. Um, so we don't want those either. And so now we have a total of 163 uh, components. So if I check these, I have to check them, come to the mapping tab, and what you'll see is now it's user defined. Okay, so now you're gonna see that we actually have 100% coverage and 97.1% coverage. You may ask, well, why did I get better coverage when I did it this way versus the default way? Um, you are using uh, the components that we actually checked, and it is um, the uh, shading map is also updating as well. So you'll notice on the shading map, if you zoom in, you won't see any blue. You're only seeing the things that you actually checked. The other thing that happens when you do this is you're overriding these parameters. Okay, so there are default parameters that are used for the peptide coverage map. And when you tell it, when you check it and use the user defined, you're overriding these. Now, the one most important one that you're overriding in this case, which is probably why we got better coverage, is the minimum confidence score. 
So the default has the minimum confidence score set to 80%. Okay, so what that means is that if we go back, okay, and we actually look, when we check it this way, okay, we are allowing full scans um, with 0% confidence score to be on your coverage map. Okay, so that's why we're getting better, better coverage when we actually select that. So if I go back and exclude those, so the way I can do that would be it has to be greater than, uh, we'll say zero. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uncheck. When you uncheck and go back, it resets the coverage map to the default. So this is our default parameters now. It resets both of them. So we have 97.2, 94.6. 94.9. 94 so let's go back to the coverage map or the processing review. It still has our filters, okay? And now this time we're going to select 132. So remember, we filtered away um, confidence scores uh, that were equal to zero, which would be all the full scan data. Um, and now we're looking at um, data that only contains MSMS. Now on this one, you'll actually see full scan. Now that might be coming from under here. This is probably a push. There's a relationship. So sometimes the software will push um, if it actually has an MSMS. So this right here, this version has an MSMS, and so it's pushing it to there. That's why you'll see that. Um, you could exclude other full scans uh, by doing contains MS2. Okay, so now everything has an MS2. So let's check this. Go down to the bottom. Um, 112, and let's go back. And now you can see that we have a little less uh, coverage. So again, so one, the neat point in, the, in this new software um, is that you're allowed to control what gets put on the coverage map. So that's extremely uh, beneficial if you want to look for certain things. Um, you can, you know, select what you're interested in and, and do that. Now, I know that getting this out and into a presentation can be di difficult. So let me show you just a few tricks. So I floated it. And one thing that you can do um, that might be helpful is you can um, control the residues per row. So sometimes what I'll do, and it depends on your screen. I could set this to 150. And so if depending on how big your screen is, this might allow you to get a better um, capture. Now, the, there's one other tr uh, trick is if you pull this out, hold control, and hit minus on your keyboard or plus on your keyboard. So it's control minus, control plus. You can actually zoom this in and zoom this out. So that might help you when you're trying to get um, you know, images of the coverage map for presentations or reports. I know it's a little bit tricky to get out and, and I am working on trying to improve that. Um, it, it, I, yeah, it's difficult. So that, you know, that might help right there. Um, often what I'll do is I'll do a snip so I'll actually just come in and snip it and copy it this way. Uh, and that way I can get a, usually a good um, image of it. Okay, so hopefully I've shown you um, the new feature in 2.0, and that is the user-defined coverage map. And um, again, we you control that by using the check, check boxes on the process and review page, filter the table however you want to filter it, Whatever you have checked, even if it's just one or two components, and you go back to the peptide or go back to the mapping, and that's what you'll see um, on your coverage map and in the shading um, uh, plot. And to reset it, you uncheck and then uncheck. So if no components are checked and you go back to the mapping, you actually see that you get back to your original plot. Okay, great. Um, check out the other videos for um, some other features that we have in uh, Biopharma Finder 2.0. Thanks.